Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Skyrim, in my house, just telling you what's going on within the city of Missoula, state of Montana, and beyond. It's time for Wake Up Missoula. Um, I have a lot to talk about. Uh, dubbing stuff. I got pre -crit. I got um, some city council report. Um, I think I repeated that before, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. But I also have a very special dude I just zoomed, um, like I showed you guys last week, but I'm going to show you another one, just like the one I did before, highlighting dude I just drew, which is more of the offshoot of uh, using the Zoom meetings and utilizing that. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, start the show. Okay, so State of the Community had Missoula leaders gather via Zoom to talk about recovering to Missoula's norm. Um, here is John Engen um, saying that the new normal should have people wearing masks. So we're we're seeing reopening happen, um, and we're we're doing our best uh, to gauge what that looks like. Um, I will tell you that one of my biggest concerns is a second round of this, and I'm less concerned uh, that 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 is a function of reopening and more concern that uh, people are relaxing in terms of some of the really basic principles that uh, I think have helped us so far. You know, social distancing, uh, washing hands, all of the stuff that was important before uh, remains important. And I think people really need to pay attention to that. Um, there's a certain giddiness, I think, that comes with reopening. And uh, and I get that, uh, but we also have to we have to remember that uh, that this virus does what it wants to do, and given an opportunity, it will do its thing. So we need to be very careful about that. Uh, of course, many ways to prevent the spreading of new cases are to make sure that people traveling from out of state that are visiting Montana uh, remain uh, with those two weeks of quarantine if they come from out of state. Uh, Josh Slotnick with uh, County Commissioner of this uh, community of Missoula talks about businesses in Missoula that have suffered. Right now our economy isn't quite on pause. We're beginning to open up. But we're not in the thick of it going 100 miles an hour like we typically are. And in this moment, we have the opportunity to really envision how is it we want our economy to live, how, uh, to be? How is it we want our city and our county to be? And I've been really heartened by the conversations we've been having with other officials in this reopening group and our MAC calls, all these other calls, um, that people are taking a moment right now to think about what is it we want to be? Not just how do we get back to what we were, but how do we get to what we want to be? And I love that we have this moment to take that on, and there's great opportunity there. Fall sports are on a lot of people's minds, and part of the uh, state of the community is to kind of wrap up the uh, the end of the uh, school year at the University of Montana, along with the community with in a college town. So here is President U University of Montana President Steve Bodner talks more about the uh, upcoming football season. Total lockdown, and then we wait a while, and we just completely open back up, and it's back to quote unquote normal. We're going to have to adapt the way we do things. Um, and, and that might mean different ways of, uh, of, of, of learning here at the University of Montana, maybe using technology in different ways, still getting the best of, uh, of, of our, uh, our, our experience here, um, but, but doing so in a way that, uh, that protects the health and safety of our community. And we're thinking the same way about Grizzly Athletics. So more to follow. It's something we're thinking about and working on, but, uh, but this is a, a broad question, I'll tell you, that every university and every uh, community around this country is dealing with now as well. Of course, Montana, on one hand, has begun to open up uh, while other communities are seeing many issues that are still large enough to affect the community. Of course, so far the university in the summer semester where many teachers and staff have worked really hard to make pilot programs and give their classes available online as well have moved forward. Uh, of course, stay at home program that allows to for the continuing education for folks who still want to attend the University of Montana throughout the summer. Of course, right now Missoula is trying to open without uh, compromising all the social distancing we've done before just to get back into it again. Uh, of course, more news uh, within the city of Missoula as well, if you haven't heard, is that MCPS spoke in length about uh, whether or not they're going to be hosting a graduation. Uh, they said that they might be able to uh, figure it out, but they're going to take it time after time uh, where uh, they're going to be allowing 250 students to uh, gather with the option of inviting up to two people. Um, uh, capping it off at two people for each kid for an in-person graduation, while many other communities across the uh, United States are uh, utilizing Zoom, um, posting up posters in their downtown communities. Uh, there's just a lot of other things that are uh, uh, 
happening. This is a continuing thing, so they're not exactly sure how this is looking forward in terms of high school graduation for the Missoula community. Of course, in more news, Montana State's uh, governor says that we will retain $113 million in the general fund moving into the next fiscal year. Steve Bullock, uh, had a press conference Wednesday saying that we will handle the budget like we handle COVID-19, uh, a day-by-day -day kind of basis, but the uh, biannual fiscal year will come to an end by June. But of course, the biggest thing about the uh, tax season and the general fund is that's going to take a big, uh, interesting turn, specifically because of the uh, um, taxes being extended for people until July 15th. Originally, uh, tax season would end sometime in mid-April, um, so people got a chance to file uh, their uh, taxes to the IRS by uh, Ju July 15th, so because of the fiscal year, the transition is going to be an interesting kind of tr with that as well. But of course, part of this in terms of money includes the CARES Act, which provided the state uh, federal money of $1.25 billion in COVID-19 relief. Of course, $123 million will go towards assisting businesses, nonprofits, renters, homeowners, and more. Um, most of the money also will be going to uh, medical, uh, just uh, um, going towards Medicaid in the state of Montana as well. Bullock wants to take this day by day. Of course, while other state speaker of the House, Greg Hertz, um, Republican, saying that they want to be proactive and disagree with uh, Bullock's day-by-day -day approach. Part of Montana's ec economy going forward is the potential for tourism, because if you really think about it, Montana is opening up their state. There's a lot of low cases in the state of Montana, and people are definitely concerned about people coming to the state of Montana to get away from their community that is uh, has a higher rate of COVID-19. So that's one of the the that's on the minds of many Montanans as well. Um, even going into the Montana fire season, which has about $55 million in reserves for the fire season. So, and that's part of that general fund of 113 million dollars. Okay, so in other states, Wisconsin's Supreme Court has overturned their stay-at-home order. Uh, the legal challenge was brought against uh, Adrian Palm, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services secretary and other health officials by Republican state lawmakers who have been pushing to relax restrictions and take on more regional approach for stay-at-home orders over the last weeks, um, as Wisconsin Public Radio reported. Uh, the restrictions would also be lifted on May 20, it was originally supposed to be lifted on May 26th, but with this brings less power to the governor, uh, Tony Evers, and his administration and future of orders will be need to be approved by the conservative majority of the state legislature. Local officials like uh, Sh uh, Shatya uh, Rhodes Conway, the mayor of Madison, Wisconsin, tweeted that the stay-at-home orders would continue to be enforced across Dane County, where Madison is located. Of course, many states have begun to reopen regionally, uh, more on a locally based state, uh, base by base. Of course, Montana and Missoula are kind of uh, different in the regards of that. Missoula is being a little more restrictive on opening up some of the businesses within the community as well. Uh, but in um, even in cases of upstate New York, who have met the re regulations of curving the COVID-19 spread, uh, many of upstate New York regional areas are starting to open up some small businesses here and there, uh, keeping in mind the uh, uh, orders to social distance as well. Uh, while the majority of population in metropolitan areas, New York City, um, New Jersey, and other places will continue to stay at home orders. Um, uh, of course, the written words, uh, of course, in the media and a lot of news and a lot of things you're kind of hearing is that you're seeing that there's a definitely thing that's going to be opening up but a lot of things uh, according to uh, Aaron Leahy out of Missoula's uh, City County Health Department in a, in a previous meeting that I've shown you guys um, is that she stated that uh, they want to make sure that there is a two incubation period before they can feel confident that the spread of COVID-19 within any community uh, can be uh, stopped completely. So and part of this is that the incubation period for COVID-19 is 14 days, two weeks. So the two incubation period would be continued about 28 days. And she gave an example earlier as well when it turns to pertussis, which is a highly contagious um, lower respiratory disease, otherwise known as whooping cough, which has a 21 day, 21 day incubation period, but it is not as, uh, it doesn't spread as far as COVID-19 has spread. Of course. So that's kind of like what's happening in the rundown of the news today as well. So I'm going to um, let you guys go for a second and I'm going to show you some new programs. It's going to be Aaron and MCAT. There's a couple of repeat programs as well. Um, we uh, MCAT in general has been uh, 
providing old programs, uh, trying to fill up some of the gaps and spaces as well. But we have been doing a lot of live streams, so if you guys get, want to check it out, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and see all the live streams that we have done. If you like us on Facebook, you'll not be notified every time that MCAT is live. Just uh, look us up, Missoula's Community Media Resource. But without further ado, here are the new programs that are going to be airing on Channel 189 this week. This is another passion of ours. Not nearly as controversial, I would say, now as four to three lanes, but going from a stoplight at intersection to circular, uh, there's about 95% fewer injury crashes, even 100% in many cases. Here, the vector is like this. It's a gentle bump. Whoops, excuse me. Stoplight, T-bones. Um, usually an ambulance is called. This is where we have most of our crashes in Missoula is at stoplight at intersections. You know, military does everything in secret. They took everything on open um, communications so that if you were involved with a um, humanitarian aid and you were involved, you could literally communicate with each other on, um, on, an open, on open channels. By the way, the first group them to make it into Haiti by far the, um, on the fir within the first 24 hours was the world media. There were more by the end of the first day, there were more news agencies on the ground than were military soldiers. When you're running for office, and there are a lot of amazing training programs across the nation, but there's a lot of negativity, and so the pressure that that places on your family. So the broader message in thinking about women in Congress, we've made a lot of strides, but if we want to make policy that is represented with the population, um, like Kelly Dittmar argues and also Lawless and Fox, is that we can learn from women about how we can effectively work together so we can continue to make policy within the halls of Congress. We, I think we probably have the most unpaved streets. And I live on an unpaved street, no sidewalk. It parallels uh, a section of the irrigation ditch. And... Uh, Dust is a problem in the summer, and I hear about it all the time from my wife. He, the dust accumulates on the windowsills, and then in the winter, we don't get plowed because it's not a hard surface, and we get the potholes, and, uh, and then we don't get the leaf picked up either in, in the fall because they can't run the, uh, the loaders on an unpaved surface. So I kind of want to start with what the MPO is, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, because I think this is something that is um, not generally out there in the community enough or understood. Um, so the question is, what is the MPO and why it's important? Well, we're, um, we're a federally mandated organization within the Missoula area. We have a population over 50,000. So back in about 1980, we hit that threshold. The federal government said that we had to form an MPO to coordinate transportation throughout the region. So knowing that we're a growing region, we have um, more challenging issues, and the MPO is really tasked to ensure that there is that coordination between the city and the county, and when you hit city limits, your transportation experience doesn't dramatically change. Um, or we're thinking about that regional big picture impact and how it affects transportation. So Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some shows and streaming things that are happening this week and continuing and what's happening as well. Uh, kicking off this week, uh, uh, this uh, today as well, is the Shira and the Princesses of Power. Uh, it's a very empowering female-driven uh, story, which basically has, uh, from the creator of Hasbro Toys, which originally made a lot of these shows just to... Uh, engage kids to buy their products is a very consumer-based toy thing. But now that the kids are all grown up and 30, like myself, and uh, are just like, hey, wait, I have money, I have disposable income, and now I want to invest my money in creating uh, the show that I want to create rather than just a cash grab of toys. So they created she and the Princesses of Power, not to be confused with she and the Princess of Power, which refers to her. Anyways, I don't want to get too much into it because I want you to think that I watch all five seasons uh, or this upcoming final five season of She-Ra and the Princess of Power. Hmm. 
Moving on, defending Jacob. Um, part of uh, the new streaming services is that um, part uh, separating themselves from that whole binging that Netflix has provided is defending Jacob. How far will you go to prove that your kid isn't a killer? Well, you're gonna have to watch this week by week instead of binging the whole thing in one sitting because they've been releasing this show week by week. Um, uh, Netflix is like we release it all, but here you go. Back to the basics of releasing every week like a sucker. Um, from what I saw in the trailer, they began to believe that everyone, uh, everything said about their kid as being a killer is true, but then they go deeper and then they find out, it's like, maybe the ki our kid isn't the killer, but they have to stretch this out into like eight or ten episodes, so they're going to be just like, every episode is just like, oh, that knife. It's like, wait, it wasn't a knife the whole time, it was this thing. Wait a minute, but then his evidence is on that thing, and then they spend about a whole hour just being like, here's the DNA test, come back. Positive. And it's like, that's what you can expect from the show. So anyways, one of the things that just uh, just dropped earlier this week as well is the new Paper Mario game. And I am a sucker for anything Nintendo or anything Mario. So Paper Mario, the Origami King. Um, let me, so I can pretty much guess that this is just a, uh, the whole idea of the Paper Mario games is that it's not the, it's kind of a, uh, played for laughs. It's a little more comedic with a little bit of uh, RPG uh, thrown in there as well where you uh, play Mario. It's all turn-based system and you're it, it's it's kind of played for laughs to be perfectly honest but with uh, what they with what they did with the previous Paper Mario games you can expect a long extremely long play time in terms of a lot of dialogue boxes moving on and moving forward. Okay so those are your uh, new things that are kind of popping in and out. Um, it's not releasing until July, Paper Mario, uh, but you can expect to uh, see a dub and stuff in about a couple seconds. It's from the man who cheated himself. And don't feel cheated uh, because I did the own voices to all the characters within this next video right now. Excuse me, excuse me. Fire now. I don't want to be waiting in the car. I'm, it's really boring. Okay, I guess. Stay fancy, stay fancy. Oh, come right into Enough offices. Enough with the pleasantries. Oh, hi. You're here to talk to that lady. Hmm. What you must remember is that you must be polite and kind to this lady. Otherwise, she'll faint for the millionth time. Mm, and then we'll have nothing, I suppose. Terrific Welcome to this fancy mansion, this fancy hallway, where you can also play checkers, no. chess, mm. ac do see all sorts of wonderful nah, things. Yeah, I don't think here. so. Ma'am. Uh, I'm not ready. Hold on a second. I'm ready. Mm, the officers you requested are here. My name is Agent Callahan, and this is my partner, Jeeves. One must not confuse his name with the butler. Uh, well, why are you here? Um, I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Ma'am, I hate to inform you, but you are a person of interest in this case. We appreciate you letting us in, but we're going to have to ask you some hard questions. Uh, oh, my head. I have a headache of some sort. Mm, I guess I'll help you lie down or whatever. Um, partner, there don't you, you think he, she's faking it? Oh, wow. I feel so much better now. Thank you. Mm, you need some water? Uh, what is water? I'll pretend you didn't say that. After all, you've been through a lot. Oh, it is quite exhausting to go from one end of the mansion to the other. <sighs> well, ma'am, I got a couple questions. Oh, only a couple? Well, actually... To be perfectly frank, to answer any of your upcoming questions, I'm actually size two. Huh? Even though I lie and say I'm a size zero. Uh, hold on, I gotta write this thing down. <laughs> Wait, where am I? Oh man, if only I had a book to write on. Too bad these books aren't for looking at. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was a little mm. girl, I used to go to the mm. pond and see all sorts of snakes mm. and frogs and... Hey, are you even listening to me? Oh, don't worry about them books. They're just for decoration. Well, they seem to be out of order, ma'am. Do you want us to rearrange them for you? Oh, man, if only I can find a lighter. Excuse mm. me, sir. I prefer you don't smoke inside my mansion. I know there's a lot of air and everything, but please don't. Well, next thing you're going to say, it's bad for me. <laughs> well, what I don't need is that secondhand Don't sadness. worry, I got you. We're on that couch. I was totally expecting that. All right, like I'll get a book to I usually elevator feet. Oh, we... Oh. oh! I got one book to elevator feet. <laughs> I don't mean to faint in front of gentlemen callers, but 
But I did go to drama camp. All right, all right, enough, enough screwing around. Oh, you probably want to know where the gold's at. You got gold? That's why every man comes by here to get the gold. Where's the gold? The gold can be found at the end of the infinity pool. Well, how do you expect us to get to the end of the infinity pool? It's infinity. We just have to go infinity plus one. No, no that's scientifically impossible. Don't tell me the odds. I believe you can get to the gold because someone had to put the gold there in the first place. This isn't like the end of Indiana Jones, right? The gold's real. Well, I'm going to go get a head start on the gold. You ain't right here, ma'am. Come on, let's get going, Jeeves. Oof, no one has ever gotten to the end of the infinity pool. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little bit of that city council report. Um, I did a subcommittee meetings as well, um, added on to the beef of my report. I have no clips to show you from the committee meetings, but I'm going to kind of give you the rundown of each of the committee meetings that happened within the city of Missoula. You, you, of course, you yourself could look up all this information. It's readily available by going onto the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, let's kick things off with Chase Jones. Um, oh wait, actually not Chase Jones, but uh, he was one of the beginning people to uh, present the Ener Energy Conservation and Climate Action Committee kicks off the meeting on a climate-ready Missoula presentation. Uh, this is part of the city and uh, county's growth plans, the master plans to incorporate green growth within the city of Missoula. And um, of course, I'm going to focus the points on the city and the county are going to make and part of their plans and how they're going to implement and impacts to development and so on. So I'm not going to talk about you know the, um, the you know climate change or anything like that. I'm going to kind of linger on how the city plans to put this in in future development. Uh, the main point is energy. Uh, coal burning, especially during the winter season, drives up heating costs for the Montanans. And part of this plans to reduce those costs and help you reduce the energy needed to heat your homes. Um, Amy Sillenberg with Climate Sort in Missoula reflects on some of the older homes in Missoula, that, which requires a lot more energy. If you consider this house, maybe in downtown Missoula and the family that lives there, um, there's going to be a number of certain risks given climate change and given the projections we expect. For example, uh, unhealthy indoor air from increasing wildfires, wildfire smoke, increased cooling costs as our summers are warm, war get warmer, physical and mental health impacts of the combination of smoke and heat um, in our environment in the summer times, potentially the damage to urban trees from storms, heat, drought, etc. But we have identified in this plan various strategies that can address these risks. Um, for example, an increase, one of the strategies in our plan is to increase the access to HEPA portable air cleaners. Um, and this is something just uh, want to mention here that we are thinking really hard about. Um, I was on the phone just today with Sarah Cofield from the City County Health Department. Um, the very, very significant concern of the intersection of wildfire smoke and COVID with, as a respiratory illness. We know that air pollution increases um, the risks from of respiratory disease and there's even some new research that air pollution in particular the pm 2.5 that we do find in wildfire smoke um, increases the rates of mortality of folks that are affected with, with covid um, you can remember one of the really bad summers where lolo peak south side was on fire which filled missoula's valley with smoke for a large chunk of the summer going into the fall school year inside the missoula valley um, Diane Amanita, a community and planning services, talks more about various public meetings and reflecting on people's reactions to this plan. Um, the planning board reviewed the plan and concluded that it is in conformance with both the city and county growth policies. Um, and the planning board um, subsequently uh, and unanimously recommended that the Climate Ready Missoula plan be adopted by the Missoula Board of County Commissioners as an issue plan of the county growth policy and by the Missoula City Council as an issue plan of the R Missoula City Growth Policy. So basically from what you saw from that clip is that this is a presentation and reflected on people's, uh, uh, what the risks of climate change and how people are, are going to grow without um, compromising green energy standards of uh, future development. Uh, my biggest takeaway from these topics leans more towards using less energy and getting more out of it. Uh, this meeting was to set a public hearing, which originally was set for the first Monday in April. Of course, uh, 
that things kind of changed and they haven't really planned this. This is a very big feedback just to kind of see how they want to grow the city of Missoula and put regulations on development within the city and also the county's going to um, co-opt this within it as well. Heather Harp thinks that this is a very proactive step moving forward with the downtown master plan. Puts us into play, puts into play adaptation, um, both strategies, goals, as well as tactics that can protect us as best as we can possibly be prepared for wildfire, smoke, flooding, and those hotter and drier summers. I, I am a backyard gardener, and I can tell you that nine degrees is going to drastically change what I can grow and when I can start growing things. And um, which sounds like a real positive to some degree, but if you're living, working outside, it is absolutely miserable. So there are a lot of impacts that we have to take into consideration. Part of the public hearing is that it will remain open until May 18th. So you have until May 18th to uh, kind of reflect and to uh, give your two cents about it. You can contact them at the city's website as well, uh, and I'll show, talk a little bit more about that after. But of course, when the city talks about something, they like to uh, keep open for the public input for a whole week now, uh, based on their uh, overall uh, lack of being able to meet in person and being online. They uh, provide also numbers where you can call in and do public comment as well, but that's been very hard to do for a lot of people. But getting back to the meeting, many uh, city council members are happy where this climate ready plan is going. Of course, up next, the city reflects on FEMA's 30 day expansion to the city to run the sleepy in that they bought, uh, purchased as a COVID-19 shelter. Of course, Stacey Anderson talks a little bit more about this. So great news. That's about a $50,000 that will be coming back to the Missoula or to the city of Missoula to help offset the capital outlay for the purchase of the Sleepy Inn. Additionally, as of close of business on Friday, eight rooms were available to be utilized. And by the close of business tomorrow, they expect that number to be up to 11 rooms available. So for many folks who are concerned about the fact that uh, we weren't able to do some of the mitigation and remediation necessary to make these safe and open to the public, I wanna assure them that the um, Adrian Beck and her team are working night and day to uh, have these rooms available. And we already have had uh, members of our public utilize those rooms. So, Of course, just a little bit more background. Um, the Sleepy Inn Hotel is the one that's just uh, right off of the uh, Russell, the new Russell Bridge that just got completed. Congratulations. But uh, the city of Missoula purchased this building and they uh, basically co-opted for the county to run it as a covid operation center for people who are homeless, uh, an aging population who uh, happens to be uh, at a certain age who also lives in an old folks home. Um, and that's one of the worst places to spread the COVID-19. And they wanted to have a place for people to uh, kind of social distance themselves from the rest of the community for people who can't social distance themselves. So that's the whole idea be be between this new Sleepy Inn and what the city of Missoula is doing. FEMA has extended it for 30 days. For, so they'll continue this and they'll take it by a 30 day basis to see how this uh, shelter will be done moving forward. Of course, the city also finalized last week's public hearing to defer $2 million to help push the Mullen Street project that will be connect Mullen to Broadway via George Elmer Drive and Mary Jane Boulevard in conjunction to the BUILD grant that was awarded back in 2019. They're looking to get another award from the BUILD grant for the 2020 BUILD grant. Um, but of course, there were a couple topics I did pass over, and you can get a chance to whole media, to watch the whole meeting by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Again, that um, email is before I slurred it at the end was ci.missoula.mt.us. Of course, do we have committee meetings? Yes, uh, land use and planning. Uh, one of the big things that they're talking about is kind of uh, how they're moving forward and how they're redeveloping TEDs. So TEDs are townhouse exemption development. And this is the whole point of this is so uh, developers can kind of st help streamline the process in building townhouses and kind of more high density housing units within the city of Missoula to help combat the housing needs moving forward. Um, part of this has everything to do with uh, tightening what kind of TEDs Missoula wants to see and avoid having long meetings with boards. Um, since uh, because this is a state government regulated development and of course the community has reinterpreted and it can interpret how they want to see TEDs in their community. Um, 
uh, the city council chambers to review the best interpret plans for the state to utilize TEDs. Part of this would be geared towards check marking in all the right boxes. Missoula has really relied on TEDs to meet the affordable housing needs in Missoula. Of course, I have had trouble showing video clips from the uh, 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 committee meetings. I've been able to download uh, the uh, City of Missoula meetings by logging on to MCAT.org. Public Works. Let's talk a little bit more about Public Works. Uh, moving on to the next committee meeting. Public Works. A big thing that's happened within the Public Works is a memorandum of, of agreement within Northwest Energy. So the city uh, and the uh, Northwest Energy have partnered up to replace all the downtown light bulbs with LED lights. That's one of the biggest things that are happening of, that they wanted to talk about. Last December, uh, Missoula met with Northwest Energy to contract con contract um, contract with replacing the light bulbs in downtown Missoula to LED lights. From what I remember from the last meeting, that Northwest Energy was on board for this and that the city was going to use Special Improvement Lighting District, SILDs, uh, to pay for it. Of course, the work involves replacing 1,808 street light fixtures with the new LED fixtures on a on poles already in place, so it's just a light bulb replacement. Of course, uh, with this, uh, in terms of energy, the city can expect to save 79000 a year in savings. Of course, the pr price per light bulb, I did a little more research. I mean, I just kind of used the internet just to kind of give an idea of like, how much does a street light bulb cost if it's an LED? So I, it was ranged about $99 to $180 per light bulb, which could be, um, so if you did the math, $99 times eighteen hundred and eight dollars you can look at a hundred and seventy eight thousand nine hundred ninety two dollars or if you go on the more expensive end with a hundred and eighty dollars per bulb you can look at three hundred and twenty five thousand four hundred and forty dollars to replace all the light bulbs with LEDs not counting the installation costs maybe perhaps but of course um, from what I also did the math in terms of how much this would cost is this could take to two to four years to recover the cost associated with replacing the street lights so with the savings of $79,000 a year with the street lights, that's kind of like what they, 79, yeah, $79,000 and you multiply that um, a year. So you might, you might see a good uh, amount of uh, coverage with that as well. So um, that kind of does my wrap up for the city council report. I just wanted to uh, remind you guys um, to, you know, check it out. I'll go to the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, you can look up meetings. You can watch live meetings. Um, they stream um, city council meetings Mondays at 6 p.m. Committee meetings are pretty much various, but they usually start around 9 a.m. as at the earliest and go until about 3, 4 into the afternoon as well. And they have various committee meetings where they have a board of the city council chambers meet at different meetings as well. So you guys can check that out. Um, but without further ado, I have another video I want to show you guys, and it is, um, let's see, oh, it's the uh, most latest uh, COVID-19 uh, video from the uh, City County Health Department. So without uh, further ado, here is Cindy Farr um, with the, another report for today. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr, and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today is Thursday, May 14th, and this is my daily briefing. Um, we've still only had a total of 41 cases today in Missoula County, so that number hasn't changed at all. 39 of those were identified by testing and two were epi-linked. We have had 40 recoveries and one death, and we currently have no active cases in isolation, and we're no longer monitoring any close contacts. The state of Montana has had a total of 462 cases with no new cases since yesterday, and there have been 16 deaths statewide. First, I just have a quick update on our mobile testing clinics. We have a couple more scheduled for next Thursday, May 21st, one in Lolo and one in Frenchtown. If you're a Missoula County resident or a healthcare worker or first responder working in Missoula County and you're experiencing any COVID-19 symptoms, you can call 258-INFO and select option number two from eight to five on Wednesday the 20th to talk to a nurse and make an appointment for that Thursday, May 21st um, offsite clinic. Next, I want to take a few minutes to provide some clarity on event guidance and how many people can be at different events under the current orders. For the most part, events are currently limited to 50 people when distancing of six feet between participants is possible. This applies but is not limited to fairs, festivals, craft fairs, vendor events, concerts, sporting events, and races. 
There are a couple of exceptions to this, which I'll describe in a minute. First, I just want to emphasize again that this cap applies when events can accommodate social distancing. If it's not possible to keep six feet between participants, then events are limited to 10 people per the governor's directive. As we've mentioned before, we're taking a gradual approach to reopening because the absolute last thing that we want to do is see a rise in cases and community spread. Missoula has many events where a lot of people gather, especially as the, war the weather starts warming up. Large gatherings offer more opportunities for people to have person-to-person -person contact, and that increases the risk of transmission. So this aspect of our community is one that we really need to seriously consider in our decision making. When phase one began, we started out with a pretty limited cap of 25 people with social distancing. After the most recent two-week incubation period when we didn't see any new cases, we raised that limit to 50 people with social distancing. We hope that this trend sticks and we can continue to gradually and safely increase that limit. The only current exceptions to the 50-person limit are graduations, which will be one-time events this spring, and farmers markets, which serve a similar role to grocery stores in providing our residents access to local produce and meat. Those will be allowed to have up to 250 people, and this number is based, based in the CDC's recommendations for the maximum number of people at large events. Graduation organizers must submit operations plans to the health department for approval before they can go ahead with the event. We appreciate the cooperation and creative thinking that we've seen with the school districts on what they can do to meet those requirements while also still honoring their graduates. Farmers markets will also have to submit a detailed plan before they can open. This plan needs to demonstrate that they are going to maintain six feet between each vendor, customers, and any other participants. 250 people is the absolute max, but it is possible that with the distancing requirements, the number of people allowed at a farmer's market at any given time will be much smaller than that 250. The max number, whether it's 250 or something lower, includes both customers and the vendors. We want people to understand that for the time being, this means that the farmer's markets are going to be a, a little different experience. Only vendors selling unprocessed agricultural products, meaning fresh fruit, vegetables, meat, and eggs, and honey, will be allowed at the markets right now. Food trucks, coffee carts, and other vendors will not be able to participate. There won't be musical entertainment or any kids' activities. Missoula Farmers Markets have flourished into a social event for many people, but that aspect will have to be put on hold while the current order remains in effect. Of course, we hope this isn't the case all summer, but we'll have to take it a few weeks at a time. Um, also keep in mind that we're still in phase one statewide, which is the most restrictive, cautious phase of reopening. And the governor will make the call on when we move into phase two and we'll continue to take local considerations into account as we move forward. That's all I have for my daily briefing today. Um, as always, you can follow me on YouTube at my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Um, you can click that little notification bell so that you get notified when additional um, videos are uploaded. You can follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department. You can check out our website for lots of information. It's missoula.co slash cvirus. And you can call 258-INFO or 258-4636 if you just have any general questions about COVID-19 or you want to know what resources might be available to you locally, or if you're having any symptoms of COVID-19 and would like to schedule an appointment through our drive through testing clinic. And until tomorrow, everybody stay healthy. Hi guys, welcome back. And of course, uh, one, one, a couple more things I wanted to talk a little bit more about before I wrap up my show is that I wanted to say that uh, um, part of the city of Missoula is that we are kind of slowly starting to reopen, but we're taking a more of a gradual approach when it comes to the safety and the, uh, the, the curbing the spread of the COVID-19. So a lot of places are implementing uh, masks. So if you go to a couple places, they require that you wear a mask cover your face when you cough, or if you have any symptoms, just not to bother to show up at all. Um, there is a lot of options in place for a lot of people to uh, get some takeout. There's uh, a lot of places where they can deliver food to you. Uber Eats is a, a place where uh, it, it is uh, one of those things that allows you to actually order specific types of food, grocery items and stuff like that for you guys to get as well. Um, I've never tried it, so it's uh, it's it could be interesting just to kind of see 
how uh, there's many different solutions to do that as well. Um, but many places are slowly opening. The whole kind of uh, social gathering has a kind of capped at 25 within the state of Montana. So if you have a social gathering, 25 or less, uh, but there still has to be uh, in accordance with the guidelines of about six feet per person. So you still have to have plenty of elbow room amongst the people. So um, one thing is that MCAT will be fully out of our old facility. We'll, we just celebrated 30 years um, on uh, Earth Day, but of course we couldn't really celebrate it during these uh, uh, um, turmoil times. Um, MCAT will be um, moving into the new library at some point, but for right now our old facility will be completely um, emptied out and no one will be, and um, we're basically exiting out the building before we move into the library. Um, end of May, um, th that's when we're, our move out date. Our move in date could be uh, at a certain point. Um, the library uh, has remained closed during these times. It has a, it's such a huge um, gathering place for a lot of people. They see thousands of people every single day. So it's really hard to kind of have that social distancing option as well. As they're moving into the new library as well, they're trying to take um, stock into uh, moving the old books from the old library to the new library, and they want to uh, make sure that everything is safe, healthy, and protecting their own staff in moving forward with the opening of the new library. But a lot of things are being said. They're, they're taking it day by day, week by week, and just trying to figure out how they're going to do that moving forward. But hopefully by the end of the summer, MCAT will be able to... Uh, be available to provide um, people in the community with uh, camera gear, equipment, training on editing, studio time, um, just a lot of different opportunities in terms of media access for the community of Missoula. Okay, so speaking of um, media access, um, MCAT, uh, my show in particular, has offered um, opportunity for uh, one of my shows to continue. Uh, it's called Dude I Just Drew. And so we've done a, a spin-off show called Dude I Just Zoomed. And so we've been utilizing the Zoom meetings. Uh, they have a, a wonderful whiteboard screen share app within the Zoom app that allows us to draw within there as well. So it's a little more uh, mouse oriented in terms of drawing, but it's, uh, different, it's definitely interesting to kind of see how um, we kind of gather and draw and being able to do social distancing while also having a cool new tool to provide a form of entertainment. So if you haven't seen the show, it's a very simple uh, idea where we have uh, five minutes to come up with uh, a drawing based on the topics that are blind. So it's kind of like improv drawing um, and we just vote to see who's who had the best uh, reaction to the topic at the end of the show. So uh, here's the highlights from the most latest and greatest dude I just drew. And this is where I wrap up my show. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Um, it looks like it's going to be a clear weekend. There might be some rain here and there, uh, but that's just kind of like what we have to deal with during the springtime. So thank you guys and see you later. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Dude I Just Zoom. Um, here, here at home, uh, everybody here, and a very special guest, Josh, back once again. I'm going to speak to you as if we were in a Brady Bunch intro. I see you uh, okay. down into I, I, the left. Because, but I don't know. I don't know which way I'm looking. I'm looking down at you. <laughs> I don't Did know. you not mirror your video, man? I, <laughs> we're not, we're not in the same... I'll post. Don't worry if there's a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Just flip them around. I'm looking down at you, but I have to look I, yeah. to the side if you're looking at me to the side. It's like, hello, Josh. I don't know. How are you? Is it good? Gonna work. Uh, we each get five minutes to draw. But this time, we're going to be using uh, app MetaBang, which you can get for free. You can download it on your computer for free if you're an art enthusiast or comic good. enthusiast. Recommend it. It's good. So, uh, Drop my pen. Um, <laughs> one second. Uh, so, three rounds, five minutes. It's on Medibank. And the judges will judge it at the end. Throwing Let's my freezing time if you. Is the best. Ooh. And uh, yeah. Piccolo playing the piccolo.
pixel up playing the pixel up. Okay, here and we go. I'm gonna have some golden material for editing this. Yep. Just like 30 minutes of Rowan phasing out of existence. Yeah, I'm gonna be phasing in and out. <laughs> oh, I like portals and just, <laughs> and just zapping in and out of reality. At, at some point, he's just like three JPEGs slapped together. <laughs> oh, that's horrifying. Okay. Piccolo <laughs> is playing Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> you guys could have been commenting for the last minute and a half about what he's drawing. Piccolo. I got those Piccolo. Toy Story alien. Uh, Wait a minute. Ears. When his hat's on, his antennae don't pop out. Hmm. Oh, no. no. He's playing the piccolo. He's got his iconic yeah. cape and giant shoulder pads. Dang, that's good. As long as Gotta love those shoulder pads. And, uh, there's a little pic- there's a little, little piccolo just singing, singing on them too. Oh, so the piccolo's in the shape of piccolo too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My oh, my that little God. desert place that he's out in by himself, he's just like, I don't know what to do. I want to build a house, but I don't, I don't live anywhere. <laughs> Is he gonna um, um, initiate the green Megazord? Yeah. <laughs> erase these. Erase these so that, so that it's official. Because it took all the drink. <laughs> there he is. What's that thing on his uh, left arm? That was like his little his little muscle thing that has like the little weird pads on it. Oh, has the lines over don't it. Don't you remember, remember? that? I haven't watched Is Dragon it? Ball. I've never seen Dragon. You're the one that inspired that uh, um, Piccolo uh, topic with posting the, you know, it's Piccolo Day. Oh, yeah. There we go. Piccolo playing got, a Piccolo. You got cat, <laughs> carrot. Piccolo is playing this Piccolo. Y'all seeing that? <laughs> Y'all see Very that? Very right nice. Now? Just draw like a Toy Story alien, but he looks more like an anime character. <laughs> Would you have to make me think of that? <laughs> Three eyes, one. Then goes check and can fix it. Don't worry, eyes. Let's go. Too fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that, Rowan? Whoa, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he disappeared. He's a phantom. Whoa, whoa. I'm back. Welcome back. I don't you, know what it is. You, you, your screen froze, and then when it caught up, you disappeared. It was hilarious. <laughs> it got unfriended. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, you know, piccolo juice tastes pretty good. Piccolo. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to my, my stream. I'm on an airplane right now. <laughs> what if we like imagined ourselves in the fifties and now we're drawing No! Um... no! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait. I have to make a new one. Wait. You got a new layer so it doesn't so you get yeah. so you don't get like the, the take over. Yeah. yeah. That is the scary that is the weird like, I don't I'm scared. There you Time's go. up. <laughs> <laughs> Next idea, imagination music. Why? Wow, it's looking pretty good already, Josh. <laughs> it's looking pretty dang good. I forgot that you guys can, you know, see this. <laughs> so this is gonna look. Really... Yeah, you guys are the, watching. Part of the crux of this series is seeing the process of the art as it comes alive in this process. <laughs> he's 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 flipping off uh, the imagination. <laughs> he's, he's, no, <laughs> he's flipping off the cake. <laughs> like this is stupid. I could do it. Looks like a music stand with four legs. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is what it, this is what I imagined. I don't know why I went for accuracy. Accuracy of what? <laughs> I don't know, of the concept that Graham just kind of like manifested out of wherever. <laughs> His uh, uh, flex uh, tape hat? Yeah. <laughs> From the flex zone. <laughs> the flex zone. He's 
thinking real hard about it. He looks really mad. He doesn't really know what to think. Okay, I'm done. Awesome. <laughs> Is that the adventure time guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good enough for me. That's my signature. Alright, I'm gonna need to I even stop. added a positive message. Alright. Alright. The heck? Oh, <laughs> okay, Rowan will be right back after no! these messages. Have you ever wanted a cell phone taped to your face? <laughs> these are the Oculus Quest controllers. Have you ever wanted circles for hands? No. Oculus. <laughs> uh, they're the Xbox controller of VR. <laughs> Welcome back, Rowan. Hey, I gotta... Uh... I think you counted down to him disappear. <laughs> Don't worry, his computer will catch up to us shortly. It's the Imagination Museum. It's the Imagination Station. He had a lot so more imagine... time to think about what he was going to draw while he's cleaning up after his dog than um, Josh did. So, advantage Rowan for sure. Oh, I like the route you're taking here. I see what you're doing. Oh, boy, he's wearing a museum inside his head. That's outside his head. That is really clever. I see we went entirely different routes. God, typical Rowan, just like Oof. blasting. Here we go. That is good. Blues for Ben. Blues, blues for Ben? Yep. What? Nice. <laughs> is that the tech toy playing a saxophone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> playing the blues for a what? mysterious figure known as Ben. Hey, that kind of looks like Detectoid playing a saxophone. Graham's trying to say. Whoa! Ah! So is that no if that's the tech toy, where's Ben? Um Ben. Who's over here. Ben? <laughs> this is uh, his uh, comic uh, web series, uh, Detectoid. Yeah, I know, but who's Ben? <laughs> He's like the main character in the Detectoid series. In his bed. They're being given to Ben. <laughs> That's Is weird. he on the wall? That's what yeah, it looks like. Yeah, he's floating. I thought the, the kid in the bed is like really tiny, and he's just kind of like hanging off the guy. This guy's playing blues for Ben. <laughs> there's a light up there. Good corner. And there's. Why is his bed floating? Because the blues is lifting him up and not yeah. tearing him down. I feel like this is an inside joke. It's not. Every so, time they say, I always have that like who's inside this joke. Who's fellow? Oh, I'm there it is, isn't man. it? But when I play the saxophone, I'll make you find Jesus. <laughs> He's like the music. There we go. Blues. Blues for Ben. Yep. Okay. Boom. Boom. Oh. All right, we're going into the final round between Rowan and Josh. Josh has the final drawing. Um, we are doing three drawings for Dude I Just Zoomed. We are keeping it pretty tight, but uh, Blues for Ben is the topic. Who is Ben? That's I, what I've been saying know. for the last. Drawing hands is a nightmare, plain and simple. Basically. Dry hands. Some blue sticks for ben, Benny. It feels like they're at a rave and they're passing out glow sticks. I get to choose a kind of text to use. They're, they're passing out death sticks. What are you doing? Uh, it's like, called Dude I Just Drew, not Dude I Just Wrote. But dude, let's write. Why don't you just, just write it out? Just write it out with <laughs> perfect handwriting. Oh, oh, say oh. Say something. Hello. Say something ben. funny, Ron. What? Say something funny. 
something funny. Oh! <laughs> wow, it's like I'm, I'm reading a comic from the New Yorker. <laughs> yeah. Is this Family Circus where they have one picture and a caption? Wait, here you, are, these are here <laughs> they are. <laughs> Hello, Ben. Here they are those blues you asked for. For. Here are those blue. Yes. Thank you. That's our blue. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Wait, what? Is that blue? Yeah, that's blue. Whoa, whoa, what different are shades of blue. Are they, are they just called blue? Who's that, Rowan? You, uh... Whoa, is that Spider-Man? <laughs> I'm stuck. Can't move. Oh, Uncle Ben. Oh. It's Uncle Ben. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, thumbs up. You spent too much time looking for typing. <laughs> I thought it's got the text button. I thought I could just... Just type? I should choose the right font, and, you know? Alright, well, there's what I got. <laughs> nice. Definitely have to give props for Rowan for uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, concept of... For integrating music. his pre-existing uh, storyline. <laughs> <laughs> That I was not aware of. I guess this is just a promo to me. To go watch, <laughs> go watch Detectoy now. On, go watch Detectoy. Go on go Hulu. Watch it on your screen. On, on Spider's webtoons. Well, uh, I think I'm gonna end um, Josh's win streak with a, a win for Rowan on this one. Yeah, sure. What? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of vote is that? What Dude, kind of vote is that? That's a one-man vote. It's a <laughs> <laughs> Just say, I decided. I decided. I get to say, and if it's Josh, like, then <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess. Wow. I did. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, <laughs> it choked on my skin. I'm crying now, guys. I got tears in my eyes. Oh god, Josh. It's what? great having you on, as always. I'm sorry for yeah. interrupting this whole thing. My dog. Get out um, of here. I'm trying. I'm trying as hard as I can to exist in the same timeline as you guys. Uh, <laughs> get that 5G in your bones. Come on. Get that 5G in my bones. Um. Constructive. Remember out. to check out us. Check us out. <laughs> Grammar, you dying? <laughs> Something was going on. You must <laughs> construct <laughs> additional pylons. What's going on? <laughs> okay. Go on with that. Right. Go on with that. No, wait, 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 I might know what's wrong. Remember to go to our Do I Just Drew website. Um, check us out on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, you can oh, check God. if you want to see more of my art. You can check me out on Instagram, Twitter. Where I post most of my art. Uh, my Instagram is noir.arts, and my Twitter is noir with an exclamation mark. But uh, Josh, you have anything to shout out before we leave? Uh, check out my Twitch. I stream there once a year and once, uh, like an hour. Um, so check me out there. Um, yeah. Nice. So, um, <laughs> so everyone, I hope you're staying safe. Remember to wash your hands. Uh, so... Good night. See you later. Oh. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. <laughs> I need to repeat that because it's good. I guess. No! <laughs> Adidas. Uh, Stay safe, everybody. Bye.